Hi everyone, my name is Benjamin Terrier. I'm an internist working in Cochin Hospital in Paris, France. And I would like to thank the FAI Deser um, uh, filière, uh, which is uh, implicated in the management of autoimmune disease, for this invitation to talk about uh, how to reduce the glucocorticoid exposure in ANCA associated vasculitis. You can find in some of my disclosures. So, just as an introduction, we're going to talk about ANCA associated vasculitis, that is a group of vasculitis uh, involving the small vessels and associated with ANCA. These diseases are um, belonging to the group of systemic necrotizing vasculitis, and some of the major organs involved are the lung and or the kidney, but all the organs can be involved. The disease is associated with ANCA, uh, targeting either the protein F3, especially for the granulomatosis with polyangiitis, or the, the myeloperoxidase, especially for uh, microscopic polyangiitis and eosinophilic granulomatosis with polyangiitis. The therapeutic management is based on the combination of glucocorticoids associated frequently with immunosuppressive or immunomodulatory agents. Especially in GPA, granulomatosis with polyangiitis, it's always a combination of glucocorticoids plus immunosuppressive agents, mainly cyclophosphamide or rituximab, even if metotrexate can be used in non-severe patients. But in patients with microscopic polyangiitis, usually a non-severe disease is treated with glucocorticoids alone and a severe disease with this combination of glucocorticoids plus cyclophosphamide or rituximab. There is different practices in the use of glucocorticoids during AAV, especially according to countries. Uh, in the US, for instance, the dose used were roughly uh, twofold lower than in France, uh, especially for the duration, but also according to time, because as you can see, the more recent study use less and less glucocorticoids. We know from previous data that there is an impact of the duration of glucocorticoids on the risk of relapse, and the meta-analysis by Michael Walsh showed that longer the glucocorticoids will be received, lower the risk of relapse will be. And it's something which was now clearly established. But on the opposite, there is an impact of glucocorticoids on the risk of sequelae. And if you consider some studies from the UVAS, the European group, uh, based on the use of the vasculitis damage index, uh, we know that this VDI, so the importance of sequelae, is associated with different items, but especially the duration of the glucocorticoids. And I would like to remind that the VDI include some vasculitis related items, but also some treatment toxicity related items. There is another important point is the risk of infection, which is especially during the first year, the major adverse event. And clearly um, evaluating strategy, decreasing uh, the risk of infection, which is more frequent than relapse, than death, and especially by decreasing the glucocorticoids, is really of importance. So we have now some data from the two or three last years that helped us to evaluate what could be uh, the best um, strategy uh, for using glucocorticoids. And if we go back to the PEXIVA study published now almost three years ago in the New England Journal of Medicine with two questions in patients with severe AAV, GPA or MPA, the first one was the PLEX, plasma exchange. I will, I, I, I will not talk about that. But the second question was the use of a standard dose of glucocorticoids compared to a reduced dose. And the primary endpoint was the a composite criteria of death and or end-stage kidney disease. As you can see with the dotted lines, the reduced dose following 
some pulses of methylprednisolone was lower in terms of uh, dose than the standard dose and the reduction of the cumulative dose at one year was roughly 60% in the reduced dose arm. And if you look at the results, you can see that the reduced dose regimen was not inferior to the standard dose, uh, which was uh, especially in terms of efficacy and based on this very tough uh, primary outcome, which is the death or uh, end-stage kidney disease. But if you look at some adverse event, and especially the serious infection, it was lower in the reduced dose, with a reduction of 30% of severe infection at one year, which is really something important. Following this PEXIVA study, we had some data from Japanese colleagues, a phase 4 open-level study uh, in Japan evaluated patients with microscopic polyangiitis and especially myeloperoxidase NCA, which, we, which is much more prevalent in Japan. Uh, and there was a randomization of patients to receive either a reduced dose of glucocorticoids, 0.5 mg per day, um, plus rituximab versus a standard dose of glucocorticoids, 1 mg per kg and per day, plus rituximab. And the primary endpoint was this time not the death or the end stage kidney disease, but the remission rate uh, at six months. To make a long story short, uh, there was uh, similar results between the two groups and especially a non-inferiority for this primary outcome which was the rate of remission at six months between the reduced dose and the standard dose but there was a reduction in the reduced dose group either for severe adverse events but also for serious infection as in the PEXIVA study. So there was a non-inferiority in terms of efficacy but a benefit in terms of uh, severe infection. So, we, a few months ago, uh, discussed for the ULAR recommendation, so the European recommendation for the management of, vas of NCA associated vasculitis. It was in Germany. Uh, the paper is uh, accepted in Annals of the Rheumatic Disease and it will be released very soon. And as you can see, the glucocorticoid regimen that is now recommended is a treatment uh, with a low dose prednisone because we recommend the treatment with oral glucocorticoid starting at a dose of 50 to 75 milligrams per day uh, depending on body weight because it was like that in PEXIVAS and with the reduction to 5 milligrams per day by months 4 or 5. So the reduced dose regimen of the PEXIVAS study is now the standard of care when we consider the European recommendation and it was the same recommendation for the American recommendation. We can, however, discuss about the applicability of this regimen in all situations. And I think we have to be aware that we should have some concern to use this reduced dose regimen in some situation, especially in the patients which were not included in the PEXIVA study because the non-inferiority of the reduced dose was not demonstrated. Also, all the patients in the PEXIVA study re receiving the reduced dose received pulses of methylprednisolone and received immunosuppressive agents. So we can consider this reduced dose only in patients that received some pulses of methylprednisolone and receiving immunosuppressive agents either cyclophosphamide or rituximab. And also, I have personally some concern about the induction regimen based on the use of rituximab, but if, but because if you go back to the data from the PEXIVA study in the supplementary table, you can see that in the subgroup analysis of patients treated by rituximab as induction therapy, they were roughly 15%. The results show uh, that um, there was a tendency for a superiority of the standard dose of glucocorticoids rather than the reduced dose, even if it was not significant because of uh, the loss of statistical power because of the low number of patients. So we still continue to recommend, even with rituximab as induction, this reduced dose, but I think you have to be aware uh, 
that sometimes some minor relapse would, would occur and sometimes you would not be able to follow and taper uh, the regimen, the, 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 the glucocorticoids following the reduced dose regimen because maybe rituximab will not be effective uh, quicker enough. Now, more than the reduced uh, exposure to glucocorticoids, the question of the no steroids in AV is now something that is really true, it's today, uh, because of the evaluation of this data on the blocking of the C5A. And so targeting the activation of the complement pathway via the C5A, C5A receptor interaction um, was a long story that took 20 years from the preclinical models of vasculitis to now the phase 3 study. Uh, but the use of inhibitors of the C5A uh, could be interesting. And the C5A, it's important to consider because it's a very important anaphylatoxin involved in the recruitment of inflammatory cells, the activation of inflammatory cells, and especially monocytes and neutrophils. And so the C5A, uh, the advocate study, evaluated uh, in a study which was published two years ago in the New England Journal of Medicine. Maybe many of you uh, participated to this study. Uh, and so it was the comparison in patients with GPA or MPA with positive ANCA um, with a newly diagnosed or a relapsing disease. Um, so the patients were randomized to receive in combination to either cyclophosphamide or rituximab, either some avacopin, avacopin for one year versus uh, prednisone for 20 weeks. So it was either a no steroids but avacopin regimen for one year or a no avacopin but steroids but only for 20 weeks. And the other point important is that if you choose um, rituximab as induction therapy, you were not permitted to give rituximab at six months to maintain the remission. So the primary endpoint, which was the remission at six months, um, we're going to move uh, forward, but just to show you how was the use of glucocorticoids in the two arms. So the avacopin arm is the red one. Uh, the prednisone dose was the gray one. So you can see that there was a decrease of the cumulative dose of prednisone in the avacopin. And if we see the results, there was at six months a non-inferiority of the avacopin arm compared to uh, the prednisone dose. And at 12 months, 52 weeks, there was a superiority of the avacopin arm compared to the prednisone dose. But once again, at 52 weeks, there was still some avacopin, there was no more prednisone. And if you choose rituximab, the patients did not receive any additional infusion since the beginning of the study. So it's just important to consider that at 52 weeks, there is some confounding factors in the interpretation of data. In terms of safety, there was no difference between the two groups, and especially there was no reduction of the severe infection as we saw in Paxivas or LOVAS, the Japanese trials, and there was lower uh, frequency of glucocorticoid-related side effects. And in terms of uh, impact on renal involvement, there was probably uh, a better um, um, increase of um, the um, renal uh, recovery uh, in patients with avacopin compared to the patient with prednisone, even if we don't know if the results would have been the same if we had compared avacopin to the current standard of care, which will be a Pexivus reduced dose regimen for glucocorticoids plus rituximab every six months. But the recommendation is that avacopin uh, in the new EULA recommendation, that avacopin in combination with rituximab or cyclophosphamide may be considered for, for induction of remission in GPA-MPA as part of a strategy to substantially reduce the exposure to glucocorticoids. So it's important to consider avacopin in patients with many side effects related to glucocorticoids because of previous flares, or in a patient for which we can expect a, a lot of um, glucocorticoids-related side effects. So as you can see, in the 
last studies, there is really a momentum in the vasculitis field to reduce the dose of steroids, which is very something very good. And sometimes, as you, as you, as you can see, is just by reducing the dose without adding any additional treatments, but also it can be helped by in, involving new drugs like a vacopin. So in conclusion, um, I think it's important to remind that the use of glucocorticoids contrasts beneficial effects and deleterious effects that all, everybody know, that the question of the optimal regimen for glucocorticoids is not yet resolved, but there is a trend to reduce the dose and the current recommendation would be for the reduced dose of the PEXIVA study. All these studies show a non-inferiority in terms of efficacy and a reduction in severe infection, except for the advocate study that did not show a reduction of infection. And um, we probably will have to identify some populations in which this reduced dose should be used or not used uh, to be able to really uh, try to personalize as we can the, the management. So I would like to thank you for your attention and for following this video and I would like to acknowledge my colleagues from the French Vasculitis Study Group, you can see the name listed here, and of course all the investigators of the French Vasculitis Study Group because we can make some studies because of all these people and of course the patients too. Thank you for your attention.